Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about a camera I purchased a month ago, one and a little bit more than a month ago. And uh, I would like to share with you my experience with this camera in the past month. I was on a holiday and uh, when I was preparing to go on holiday, I was doing my, uh, my luggages and I was doing also my, I was packing my gear and then I figured out that uh, the gear will be too heavy, you know, to uh, all my gear to bring with me. So I decided to go out and to buy this camera and to bring this camera with me on uh, my holiday to test it out and to try it out. So this camera is the Fujifilm X-T20. Now, I have to tell you guys, this is my first uh, interchangeable lens Fuji camera. Before I used to have a, a point and shoot bridge camera from Fujifilm and uh, it was okay and I, I was happy with the camera, no problem at all. But interchangeable lens camera, this is my first camera from Fujifilm. And I have to tell you that I am positively surprised. I am impressed positively. Now, the camera is very small. As you can see, the camera is just... Uh, just like the A6000, I would say, it's uh, the same size. And uh, I bought the silver, the silver uh, um, and, and black combination. You can get the camera in, in pure black and, and this kind of silver and, and black combination. Now, uh, at the moment I have a zoom lens on it, but I will speak in, a, in another video about the lenses. I bought two lenses as well with the camera. But I will speak in another video because um, uh, this video will be too long simply. So, the, uh, what I like in this camera, first of all I would say what I like and then I will say what I don't like. Now, what I like in this camera is that sturdy uh, build quality. I mean, you can, you can feel on the camera that it's built like a tank. And also every single switch on the camera, whatever, the dials, the uh the 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 wheels you know the function wheels or the buttons how you press you can feel the build quality is excellent again when i used to own the the sony a6000 and the sony a7r and uh, the sony e-mount lineup cameras uh, they have the same type of screen like uh, like this camera you see it's it's a flip out screen it's not uh, tilty flippy like the panasonic you cannot flip it over Sorry, you cannot tilt over. You can, you, you can, um, you can only tilt. Sorry, not uh, flip. But in the same time, this screen is when you put your hand on the screen and you open up, you can feel the sturdiness. I had a problem with the with the with the Sony A6000 when I opened up the screen. It was a little bit like you could move a little bit. You know, I mean, this screen is sturdy. You, you can you feel that you almost put your like that you know you can hold it the camera from the screen it's no problem at all you know it is so sturdy so well made now image quality of the camera in my opinion in every camera when you when you buy a camera you want uh, three things to be good first autofocus second image quality of the sensor and uh, obviously the lenses but that's a different story and the third one is the ISO performance now I will post some pictures. I will put some pictures uh, uh, on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I will put some uh, some example shots. You know what I did in this month. I was playing around with this camera for uh, for a month, so I know what I'm talking about. But image quality is amazing. First of all, the sensor is the sensor from the XT2. We all know that the Fuji XT2 sensor is excellent. This is the same sensor. The image processing is the same like in the X-T2. Now, the most importantly, the second one, the autofocus, is the same like in the X-T2. Uh, I would say I did try the X-T2. I would say maybe the X-T2 is a little bit faster, a hair faster, but the, this, this autofocus is more than enough for any kind of job you want to do. I don't say if you are a dedicated sports photographer or wildlife photographer, then obviously you have to buy the xt2 you know but because that is the best that is the the, the top of the range like 
but in the same time this camera has the same autofocus points like the X-T2 and it has kind of the same autofocus. I wouldn't say that it is exactly the same. Many people will say it is. When I did try the X-T2, you know, and this one, one near the other, for me, it looked like the X-T2 is a little bit faster. But that might be only me, I don't know. Anyway, the autofocus is fast enough for any kind of photography, including wildlife and sports photography. But like I said, the, the, the possibility to tweak the autofocus in X-T2 is much more uh, uh, advanced than in this one. Because in this, in this one you have a few options, the example, the continuous autofocus, you have a few options to change the continuous autofocus. But in the X-T2 you can get into the menu and you can tweak the autofocus however you like. Now in this one you cannot do that. You have a few preset options which one you can choose and that's it. So that obviously there are some disadvantages and uh, that's, that's understandable because this camera it's like 700 euro or 750, something like that. Unlike the X-T2, it's uh, over 1,300 or something like that. So anyway, why did I purchase the X-T20 uh, and not the X-T2? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the third one, the, the ISO. So I was talking about the image quality that is excellent, brilliant. It's a 24 megapixel, no uh, anti-aliasing filter sensor. Second is the autofocus, great. Like I said, it's no problem at all. And the third is the ISO performance. The ISO performance of this camera is simply amazing. I will post, I will put some shots, which one I did with ISO 10,000 with this shot now, with this camera. Now I am I am a little bit image quality freak, so I like my images uh, pure and and uh, uh, clean. But I have to tell you that I would use those images, which were made with ISO 10,000. I would use it with the Nikon D7200. The maximum I would have gone, or or I would go, you know, with the Nikon D7200, that would be roughly about 6,000 ISO. But with this one. I did, uh, I don't know, the, the ISO uh, noise, uh, form and shape and everything is a little bit different than in, in, uh, in other cameras, in other sensors, and that is good. And I tell you, I will post some Im images so you can, you can see the images and I also will, uh, will upload the images and you can download from there the raw files and you can do whatever you want with them. But like I said, the ISO performance, in my opinion, it's not like the Nikon D500, that's, that, that's, uh, that's true, but in the same time the camera is not the same price. So, these were the three things that I'm looking up when I buy a camera. Now, why did I buy the Fuji X-T20 and not the X-T2? Like you all know probably, I was in, uh, in the Sony mirrorless lineup and uh, I was kind of uh, disappointed and I, I sold all my, all my Sony gear and uh, I got back to Nikon because uh, I just simply didn't like the cameras, you know, and, and it was not for me. I don't want to say that they are bad cameras. I don't want to hammer Sony, don't. It, it was just uh, not for me, you know. I didn't like several things, you know, and I don't want arguments again about Sony and whatever. But why I purchased this camera? Because I wanted, first of all, I wanted to see this. This is not really expensive, you know. The camera is about 700 euro and I can sell it anytime and I don't really lose any money on it. So if I don't like, I said, I will sell it. If I like it, I will buy X-T2 and that's what I will do. So first I bought the X-T20 to try it out. Obviously I tested the X-T2 as well and uh, I know how you feel with the X-T2 and everything. But I wanted to see first of all this one. And then I said, if I'm happy with this, I will buy the X-T2. So, I am 100% happy and I will buy the X-T2 as well because this, uh, this I, 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 there are a few things which one I don't like in this camera but most of the, uh, the things are, are completely fine and they are excellent I tell you. Let's talk a little bit about the camera. Now, you, like you, like you uh, already know probably you have the dials, the physical dials on the top which one I like again. 
because you don't have to get into the menu. You can just change the shutter speed. There's a shutter speed uh, dial, there is an exposure compensation dial, and there is a, a mode dial where you can select, you know, the, the, the single shoots, continuous shoot, and uh, advanced mode one and two, and movie and panorama mode, and uh, all these kind of things. Now, the, the difference between the X-T2 and this is that the X-T2 has also an ISO dial on the top. This one doesn't have an ISO dial. And that's, uh, that's, it's okay in one way, it's not a problem in the other way. Because if I turn on the camera, it, this camera is very customizable. I have to tell you that it's so customizable that it's unbelievable. So it's actually so simple um, to set the ISO that I can set the back, uh, the back wheel, the control wheel. If I press the control wheel, that's, that's also functions like a button. So I press the control wheel and then the ISO will, will jump up on the screen. And then I can just turn the control the same wheel I can turn. And I can set the ISO however I like. And then I just press the, the, the shutter button halfway and, and that's it, it's set. So it's so simple. I just press the, the wheel, the control wheel, ISO pops out and I will set. And again, there is something what I like very, very much in this camera. And that is that it has three auto ISO settings. Now, I can set my auto ISO one for outside when I shoot sports, the example. I can set uh, uh, the, the maximum ISO, the minimum ISO, and also the minimum shutter speed. And that is great. That is an excellent, excellent option, I would say. Because you can do mistakes, you know, and if you, uh, if you set the example auto ISO, the default sensitivity is 200. And then you set the maximum sensitivity, let's say, to 1600. And then the minimum shutter speed I set to 1 250th of a second. Because I shoot with uh, 1 200, uh, sorry, 200 millimeter lens, you know, and even the 1 250th of a second is a little bit uh, on, the, on the border, I would say, because it's uh, uh, the 200 millimeter is actually 300 on the crop sensor, so it should be 1 300th of a second. But 1 250th of a second is okay. So I set the minimum shutter speed to that. Now, if I, the example, I want to shoot and I see ISO is, a, is a 1,600 and I want to go down with the shutter speed at 1 250th and I want to go slow, lower than that, it doesn't let me. It just doesn't let me to go lower. And that is very, very good. I can set the first one to outside, the ISO, the auto ISO 2 to inside and the third one, however you like, you can set. And that is brilliant, I would say. The second thing is obviously that uh, the camera is small. Well, that's understandable because it is a small pocket size camera, you know, like the A6000. If you put a small pancake lens on it, you can just stick it in your pocket and that's it. So it is too small for my hands. You can see when I hold the camera, you know, accidentally I press these buttons in the back, so I have to take care. So what I, what I figured out, I don't uh, hold the camera from here. I hold the camera with this hand. And I use this hand only to change, you know, and, and, and to change over here the settings or, or touch the screen or, or something like that. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, the camera has a touch screen. So you can touch uh, uh, the focus points, you know, you can change the focus points. And uh, also you can select over here on the screen, uh, touch to shot. So if you touch the screen, the camera will take the shot immediately. I will sh show you. You see, if I touch, Look, it takes the shot immediately. Or I can just change it to autofocus and then I can drag around the focus points wherever I like. And uh, that's, that's what I use usually, the focus point. You know, I don't really use the touch to shoot. You know, I don't use that function. Anyway, the camera has three, uh, uh, three possibilities uh, focus-wise. There's manual focus, it, the switch is down here. On the side of the camera it's manual focus continuous focus and uh, uh, single shot auto focus now if uh, if we speak about continuous auto focus the single shot auto focus it's fast it's lightning fast i mean uh, it's and also it's to minus three ef you know you can hear it's like i i push the uh, i push the shutter button and it's it's instantaneous that's not a problem the continuous autofocus of the camera is, like I said before, it is good enough for 
my type of photography. I do also some sports photography in my son's rugby matches, but in my opinion, it is good enough for that. And uh, the manual focus, the manual um, focus possibilities, it has also the focus picking and uh, the magnifying. Now, I set one button over here and when I press that button, you know, the, the camera will magnify in and then I press again and magnifies out. Uh, I like to use that, but I had a positive surprise over here and that is about focus picking. Again, I don't want any arguments with Sony users, but I have to tell you that when I, uh, when I was with Sony uh, cameras, the peaking on the Sony cameras is not accurate. I mean, you shoot and after that on the computer you figure out that the, actually the, sh the shot is not in focus. It happened with me several times, so that's why I couldn't rely on manual focus lenses because I couldn't rely on peaking. I always had to do the magnifying. Now, with this camera, and I have to tell you, I did try the X-T2 as well, and these two Fuji cameras I put my hand on, the peaking is absolutely spot on. I mean, I did hundreds of shots with, uh, with focus peaking, no problem at all. Never missed any of them. So it means the focus picking is reliable on this camera. And that makes me very happy because I like the manual lenses, like Samyang lenses, and uh, I, I also like uh, Nikon lenses, you know, or Zeiss lenses from, um, um, from the, the original Zeiss lenses, not the Sony Zeiss. And I love them. And they, uh, they are uh, a joy to use on this camera. I tell you, the picking is excellent. It's working excellent. Okay, I don't want to speak about uh, too many things over here. Oh yeah, the third things I don't like is the small little microphone jack on the side because it's not a 3.5 millimeter jack, it's a 2.5. You need an extra adapter and well, it's not a big deal, but it should have been, I'd say, the, should have been, I'd say, the 3.5. Okay, there is another thing which one, uh, I think it's a good innovation. I think I, it's, it's a great idea. And that is, there is a switch on the camera over here, just at the shutter speed dial, there is a small little switch. And if you, if you switch that switch on the side, it, it can be auto mode and uh, uh, normal mode or manual mode or however you, you want to say that. Now, if you switch to auto mode, the camera automatically take control of everything and it will set everything. So if you want to hand the camera to somebody who doesn't know anything about photography, just switch this uh, to auto mode give it to him and he will make great pictures with it because the camera will do everything after that you just switch it back and then uh, manual mode is back on the camera and you can do whatever you want with the camera what else i could say the um, another thing which one i would say it's a little bit uh, hmm, not so good is the viewfinder actually not the viewfinder i like the viewfinder the viewfinder is great and uh, what I miss is the, the rubber eye cup from the, from the viewfinder. You can see that there is no rubber eye cup here. And uh, when you are inside or something, it's okay, it's no problem. But when you are outside in harsh sun, you can get, uh, the sun gets in near your eyes, you know, because it, there is no rubber eye cup over here. It's not the end of the world, but it, sh it would be better with, you know. But that is obvious, you know, I mean, you, you can't have everything what the X-T2 has because then <laughs> you buy this camera, I don't buy the X-T2. That is obvious, you know. Obviously the, the, the battery is down here like at the A6000 and the SD card slot as well. And uh, that is again something which one I don't really like, but the X-T2 has on the side and that is great, you know, and you can change the battery and the SD card. And the X-T2 has two SD card slots, double SD card slot. This one has single. So, um, what else I could say? I would say that, obviously, this camera is a keeper for me. It looks like uh, I will keep definitely. I won't sell it. And uh, I will buy the X-T2 as well. And I will speak in my next video about the two lenses actually one lens in one video and the second lens in the second video and I will put some pictures as well so you can uh, you can see what I'm talking about and uh, I was impressed with the lenses so if you want to see those videos please subscribe and uh, stay tuned and I will upload them in a few days time other than that 
I don't really want to talk about specifications because you can, you can find it anywhere on the internet. I will show you some sample photos. I am absolutely 100% impressed with this camera. And uh, I can see, I can see this camera in my camera bag for the, for the future, definitely, and XT2 as well. So, I hope that uh, this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that you liked it. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share my videos. If you have any question in regards to the XT2, uh, XT20, sorry, please leave a comment down below and I will try to answer best of my knowledge. If you uh, want to add something, if you think that there is something important and I forgot that, please feel free and leave a comment down below. I'm just a human being and the truth is that I, I don't really like to, uh, to make videos where is, uh, uh, I have notes and I, I don't like that. So I just, I just say what I think, you know, and what I, uh, what I know that I have to say and I might forget something this way, you know, but anyway. I try to help others with my opinion and uh, if you think that I forgot something, like I said, feel free and leave a comment down below. Other than that, I wish you a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.